Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to episode 5 of Donald Man. So last episode, if we go into our wonderful text, we got some of the Neolithic technology. We got enough to start creating a weaver and crafting up our own clothing, which will be very beneficial to keeping everyone nice and toasty warm. So we're working towards that. That will also mean that we're going to need to get the sheep domestication to allow us to get some wool. So that is also on the short list of things to do. So at the moment, we have enough tasks lined up that I am going to allow these guys to just sort of do nothing for a bit. Uh, if we go into F5 and check the workload, um, actually, no, I'm maybe... Yeah, one person's wandering around. Maybe we do have time for a few extra tasks. A little bit of idleness will be good. It will allow us to clean up this crazy amount of barley that we have over here. And here we go. As you can see, they're starting to stack it all up. So this will be my first stables. And we'll soon have all of the storage tents needed to obtain the knowledge benefit from building five. And five is probably all of the storage tents we'll really ever need. And we survived another winter and obtained another milestone. Expansion. When that random person joined, we got 20 people in our community and 20 was a milestone for this scenario. Awesome. If you're ever wondered, wondering about your milestones, the five key gets you there. So the next milestone will be unlock all Neolithic founder crops, probably, most likely. Oh, and here's a trader. Let's see what they have to offer. Sheep domestication at a high commission. Uh, this might be tough for me to buy. We'll see. I do have a lot of um, bows and the like to sell them. So it's possible, plausible even, that we'll be able to afford it. But it does come at a steep, steep price. Man, why do they why do they charge me so much? <laughs> All right, at the cost of some leather outfits. I feel bad cuz people are going to be a little cold. Oh no, you know what? We can sell our old bifaces. Uh yeah, that will do. And just sell the leather straight out rather than the outfits. So let me All right. There we go. The leather outfits have value added to them. So now that we have sheep domestication, uh, we can go attempt to tame some ibex. Now, those are donkeys. So if we double click one ibex, it will highlight the group and capture instead of hunt. And we'll be restricted to capturing young ibex. So look out for the bright, uh, the deep green ibex. The deeper the green, it means they're young. All right, uh, that was some odd horses. That might be the only two ibex close enough to grab. Bear, what about boar? I'm looking that I have some enemies. Ah, there's no real reason to get the boar. Now, because I had overworked them, there is straw and and grain from last season just sort of sitting out, which is not ideal. And due to the fact that it is springtime, the workload is probably about to jump drastically. So now that I actually have the sheep domestication... I can go and get something else with my um, with my technology. Hmm. Maybe megalithism. Try to help out some of the moods around the community. So the way megalithism works is you have specific mining nodes called megaliths like this. And to queue one up, you just go ahead and mine that. And it takes a little bit of time. And what it will do is it will create a giant stone used to make spiritual construction. 
And that's the only purpose of a megalith. There are a few different types of spiritual construction objects. There's the menhir, as you can see, and then there's the the uh, dolmen. And then last, but certainly not least, the stone circle. And all three provide spiritual needs for your people. I suggest building all three uh, for the variety so that they can regain the morale more efficiently and quickly. Okay, I have the speed type going up a little bit. And we are at our population capacity. So one of the next things I'm going to do is upgrade the huts that need repairing. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm actually changing my mind on that. I'm going to build a hut straight away. So a hut is an upgraded tent. The tent's um, capacities are um, can be improved by building these huts. So I'll, I'll build a hut right there. When you upgrade a house, uh, dur during the duration of the upgrade, it is not usable as shelter, which means if, providing there is no storms or anything like that, uh, I wouldn't really take that much of a morale hit by upgrading one, but it is wise to uh, make sure that everyone does have shelter. So there is the hut. And as you can see, the hut has a separate knowledge built structure progress um, separate than the tents. And we are building that pretty quick. Now because of the recent population boom, most of the dried skins that I had access to went straight to clothing, which is why these Older tents um, are needing maintenance but aren't being maintained. So for me to get some more skins, I'm going to need to hunt some additional animals. And a harm already wounded wild horse is probably a good target. And I might... This specific um, human already has a bow... We drive the horse into the water, and the moment it resurfaces, it collapses. And this will give a, a few skins. We can also tame the mufflon, so I'll try that as well. Now, domesticating animals will require a nice surplus of straw. The animals eat straw in the winter. So you definitely don't want to neglect your straw count. And what I'm going to do is go into my limits here. So I don't really care much for goat. So I'm going to set my limit to, of goat to zero. And then my limit of sheep, I'll go for 10. At the moment, I have stables for 10. So that's why I limited my sheep to 10. Uh, goats, because if I'm going to feed animals, I really want something out of the feeding of them, and I value wool more than anything a goat can give. But, regardless, uh, taming these mufflon, and here we can watch the process. Turns them, oddly enough, poof, into a sheep uh, when they are uh, tamed. The goats that I got were from the ibex. Now, providing I take care of my sheep, feed them, look after them, etc., they can breed, so you can turn a male and female um, sheep into, you know, a whole stable full without purchasing more sheep, which is very, very convenient. Now, some of the tents that need repairs have a really low condition, so they're the ones that I'm upgrading first in order to sort of um, refresh their 
uh, condition. And as you can see, the huts have a higher stability or higher durability, I should say, than um, the tents. So I get warned that my last goat has died. That was absolutely by design. Uh, we need to seek out more mufflon if we are to expand our sheep population. And I don't see any that are conveniently nearby. That's okay. We'll have opportunity in the future. I'm going to increase the amount of people that are getting mud because mud is becoming a bottleneck. This hut, for instance, is pending mud, and I have two, um, and this hut is going to be pending for mud. And a lot of these uh, buildings, these stables and the like, uh, will be bottlenecked by, by mud indeed. We also apparently have no flint. That is a problem I can solve. So if you ever have a lack of a specific material, uh, hitting tab to go into the... Well, there's a... A nice surplus of flint right here. Let me, um... Edit this to be smaller. Plop it right there, and we're all set to ready to go. This will be the last... Or no, second to last, excuse me, storage tent that I need. Now, as far as the sledges go, they do wear out over time, and I always try to keep an eye out to see how many idle sledges I have. So if I double-click them, you can see that I have five sledges and none are currently in use, which means I really don't need any additional sledges. Um, if I double-click them and they're all sort of gone and AWOL, it means that, yeah, I need to construct some additional sledges. So you want to make sure that each of your uh, villagers that you have has access to a sledge if they need it, uh, which means you want one idle at all times. All right, so this trader is commission low and trying to sell sheep, which wouldn't be a terrible idea just to get a jump start on our sheep population. Um, and what I'm going to do is sell... Uh, my older bone spears for that. There we go. Trade complete. So animal control is another milestone, which is to get 20 domesticated animals. So I could change my sheep population up to 20. I would need another... Uh, stable and then looking at my current population my workload dipped and I do have people sitting around this is with uh, the six key the eight key is my knowledge so domesticated animals up to ten is also a general knowledge progress uh, milestone that will allow me to um, have more knowledge points So at this point, I need to probably organize a bit of a hunting party. I am, at the moment, a little low on animal skins and our food. I wouldn't say is dangerously dwindling, but it stands to be bolstered a little bit. So let's go select some hunters. Have them all rendezvous. Come on. Two older people. They still have spunk left in them. And the auric I was aiming for definitely got spooked. They do fight back, but this one was older and therefore a little bit easier for me to take down. Checking around, we do have an adult mouflon that's all set to go for. They're happy wandering around a bunch of flint farmers, but then the moment 
anyone moves towards them, they sprint. So instead, what I'm going to do is grab everyone that's standing here and... Oh, come on, man. I know you're hungry, but... No, his hands are full. He's like, nah, no, nah, sorry. <laughs> Not going to do it. Oh, she doesn't really even have a hunting tool. I wonder why she came up as a hunter. No, she didn't. She was uh, she was the gatherer for the flint. Uh, that explains it. Let's see what we got. Just trying to efficiently hunt some animals. Definitely spooking the hell out of these. Mufflon. An adult male versus a young bear? My money's on me. And that would be money well spent. This young bear really doesn't provide a lot of resources, unfortunately. So here is my first storage tent I'm upgrading to its Neolithic counterpart. And we are waiting once again on mud, straw, sticks and wood. Sticks and wood I have plenty of, mud I'm low on, and straw I have enough for some, or for a lot of these construction projects because I preemptively made a lot of barley. Now, if it's your first time playing, you're not going to know necessarily to do that. So, that's exactly why I stockpiled uh, like crazy. Uh, is there a better mine closer? Yeah, uh, no, that one's out. And I don't have underground mining yet. Is this one? Yeah, this one's closer, I believe. Now, if you're wondering why the stables aren't empty, uh, animals will only use it when they need to, uh, being winter and all. And here we have like an adult sheep that will get periodically sheared. And a young female. And the last one is a young male. So I do, well, I do perhaps have a breeding pair. And I don't believe there's any concept of um, incest or anything of that nature in this game. So... Uh, you can go ahead and not worry about siblings breeding like that. Uh, so let's construct the first menhir. I'm not going to drag this uh, this megalith far, but the way to put it in place for construction is to create a uh, transport for it. It basically uses three leathers and three logs and sort of rolls it into place. And you'll have to do that for every um, megalith structure that you want to construct. I do have enough knowledge accumulated for yet another technology to be unlocked. And I'm going to go with underground mining. Underground mining allows you to convert these spent and exhausted um, uh, mining uh, areas, I guess, into usable um, mines once again. And I'll set that one up to be repurposed as such. So I just got my knowledge for my five storage tents. I really wouldn't have built five storage tents if not for the knowledge benefit. But there we go. My guess is Mud is a bit of a bottleneck because these banks have been tapped of all of its mud. So I am going to manually set up to extract mud from further banks uh, for now. Probably not permanent tasks. So here is the first rolling megalith. It 
just got constructed. Um, and the villagers will automatically haul that into place for this menhir. And I'm building a menhir not because it's the most efficient, it's just the cheapest. Um, so that way I'll get the knowledge return more quickly. The most efficient is the biggest one. The stone circle provides the most prestige and morale uh, for the least amount of resources. Two new humans have joined, making sure I do have tasks for them, and one dies. Ah, uh, the circle of life. Three new humans joined and one died. Do a quick sledge check. Oh yeah, we have a lot of idle sledges. No issue there. The granary here does look to only have one open slot. So it probably wouldn't be the worst idea to set up another one. And I'm going to put it right here. It does have the ability to store grain, so I can have this be the one focused more on grain. It's right next to the grain farm. And the miner is constructed. And as you can see, it provides more prestige than uh, totems or skull poles. Now, if I want to really kick up my prestige, and, and prestige, what prestige does is it encourages strangers to join your community and that way you can have more explosive population growth it also allows for some additional um uh traders to visit you Ooh, i want to hunt that woolly mammoth or a rhino rather um of course it does it is helpful to make sure that you have all the resources that you need because if you um let's say stopped everything you you were doing and built a lot of um high prestige objects like a few dolmen and stone circles um your population could feasibly as long as you had capacity for it explode and the net result of that would be um that all of a sudden you would have a lot higher demand for clothing for food uh, so it's not necessarily a good thing to grow faster than your uh, capacity for for providing for your villagers. Now, fortunately, there is a check and balance on that. Welfare. So as soon as you grow explosively, um, if there isn't enough food or shelter or whatever for your people, uh, they will be at least temporarily set up um poorly and as a result a net result your welfare will go down and that will help to lower the attractiveness of your community to um, newcomers okay now there's 50 flint in that mine and we built our first storage hut okay this um rhino all but disappeared so I'm going to change gears and head this way. And it's wounded. Oh, this will be easy. <laughs> One shot. All right. Anticlimactic. <laughs> but I'll take it. Uh, cave bear. A young male cave bear. I'm glad I have multiple hunters here. I'm just doing it because cave bears aren't safe to have around uh, ever. Oh, you're tired. You're not going to do the butchering. But at least there's a lot of skins on those guys. All right, trader. Fortification for high commission. It's tempting, but I think I've stressed my tool crafter enough. Um, I have no interest in goats, but what I will do is buy a little food, I guess. Ooh, I always buy flint. Flint is something that's relatively cheap to purchase and always beneficial to buy, in my opinion. Just because you very slowly exhaust all of the flint around you. And it becomes harder and harder to obtain. Now, at some point, 
or not at some point, at a specific point, you do get end up with copper, bronze, iron, and steel. So uh, flint does get um, sort of outdated, but not yet. Well digging. I'm going to push towards my Neolithic crops in order to hit that milestone. The milestone of a Neo farmer. So now as you can see, the sheep, because it is winter, are sheltering in the stable. And they are going to be eating straw and water. Oh, straw that's almost fully decayed in water. And I'm not actually going to do anything with the pulse domestication. Which seems a bit of a waste to get the technology but not use it. Now the actual... Well, maybe I'll do one pulse field. But I will need to free up a little bit of space for that. Seeing that I'm out of logs, that task also allows me to uh, to get some logs for free. And logs logs and distant um, butchering are the tasks where you're going to need sledges the most. So as you can see, these sledges are making quick work of hauling all of the wood back to the pile. Whereas doing it one by one um, sucks. <laughs> so going into the uh, three pulses that I have unlocked. Uh, what I could do is put one teeny little field to be able to determine each one. Just so that I can get a handle. If you're ever curious about what a specific crop does, you can always plop one field down. So, planting season is in the winter, um, which is generally when you have the least amount of work. That's generally when I try to do some construction. Um, but as you can see here, there's really not any difference between the three. They're not special in any way, uh, unlike the grains. So if I was going to eat pulses, I guess lentils sounds better to me than, than bitter vetch. And it's planting season is in the, in the winter. Ooh, dogs. That's not good. There's not much I can do for dogs' health when infection strikes. But I do hope it turns around for them. Alright, dry skin seems to be a recurring resource I am lacking. So I am going to keep an eye out for high, high yield targets like the woolly rhino. Come on rhino, I just want your skins and furs. Yes, very high yield indeed. Oh, poor pup. I won't butcher you. I don't need the food that bad. Plus, I just don't really want to eat Doug. So the main difference between the uh, storage huts and tents, the tents uh, store just a lot more. If you look... This is a 2x6, uh, and this is a 3x6. Uh, and it also has a higher condition, so it falls to disrepair more slowly, just like the regular houses as well. I'll allow the raw stuff to be stored here, actually. It might help with long range hauling. All 
All right, having them all grab bows. Sorry, horses. Majestic creatures, but I need the leather. So you can see, you can very easily spot the adults, the healthy adults, out of a crowd. And I just got the knowledge. Oh, I don't need to hunt a full. I got the knowledge for hunting a bunch of wild horses. I'm going to try to work towards the next milestone as well of 10. And donkeys. There we go. Just trying to get my knowledge up. Cave bear attack. Wow, right in the center of town. Bold. It's not going to work, but bold. Oh, you know what? And there's another one here. Just while everyone's standing around, I will not... Uh, I will not idle with cave bears in my perimeter. That last one saw what I did to the mama and siblings or whatever. I don't I don't know what gender this was. Yeah, mama and siblings and bolted. I don't blame you, buddy. I was going to come for you, but you had the right idea to get out of dodge. All right, we did get a traitor in the midst of that. This traitor just spectated the uh the hunt. Uh, their commission is high, which means I'm probably not going to buy very much off of them. I will buy some linens and aim to get that weaver going. <laughs> so that means that if I want to get a weaver, uh, we'll need to play up, plop a weaver down. That seems to be a good place. And then, oops, build, production, an outfitter. Have that sort of be the center of town, the commercial district, if you will. Whereas the crafters right over here. And soon the, uh, the skins and leathers will be somewhat obsolete. Hoping sooner than later. Yeah, the second granary was definitely helpful. And I have a full haystack, which is an indicator that I'm going to need another one. So that's in storage. Now, as I said before, some objects like haystacks don't um, push your knowledge up at all. So... You know, there's really no reason to build multiples unless you actually need them. Wow, these guys really wanted the outfitter going. So what the weaver does is takes wool and linen, raw wool and linen, and turns it into the threads or the cloths that I need. And the weaver is just like the crafter, but just for clothing. And I do have enough technology to unlock flax domestication and this last field here this last square for a field is going to be my flax field this sort of area here and that also because i unlocked that gave me the milestone of neo farmer unlock all the neolithic crops So the outfitter here is going to be making wool outfits for this uh, winter and linen outfits for this summer. And the increased style versus the old skins uh, makes people happy. And then also that means that I alleviate my demand for skin outfits, which are more expensive to me. But here comes a raider attack. And that's going to have to be a bit of a cliffhanger. Not that I'm all that worried about the Raider, but I'm out of time. So if you have any feedback or questions for me about Donna Man, uh, just hit me up. Let me know. I will be happy to answer all of you. And if you have any feedback, tips, tricks, anything like that, that you either want me to utilize or want me to share to the wider community, uh, leave a comment. 
And thank you all for watching. I'll catch you all later. Adios.